So today we will discuss about the expression for thermal conductivity in case of metals. How to derive the expression for thermal conductivity in metals we will discuss today. So consider uh, two cross sections. Let us take a, a metal rod which is having the total length lambda. Okay. So total length of the rod is exactly equal to lambda which is the mean free path of the electron. Consider two cross sections A and B in a uniform metallic rod AB separated by distance lambda. So let us take a metallic rod whose length is lambda. What is lambda? Lambda is the mean free path okay, of the electron. So mean free path means it is the distance traveled by the electron uh, from one collision to next collision. Okay. So let the temperature gradient be the dt by dx along x direction. So in this direction, the temperature is decreasing. So that decrease of temperature is uniform and that is dt by dx. If there is a change of length dx, there will be change of temperature by dt. As the temperature change actually. So uniformly, this temperature is decreasing. So let A and A at high temperature T. So and A is maintained at temperature T and B at a distance lambda. B is situated at a distance lambda from the end A. That will be at low temperature that is equal to T minus lambda into dt by dx because dt by dx is the temperature gradient temperature gradient into distance. So that much of temperature is less compared to end A temperature. is temperature So therefore temperature at B will be T minus lambda into dt by dx. That is the temperature at end B. So these two you have to define. Now heat conduction takes place from high temperature region to the low temperature region. So definitely heat conduction takes place from end A to end B of the metal rod. During the movement of electrons in the rod, collision takes place. So collision of the electrons will take place. Because of that, the electrons near A, near end A, lose their kinetic energy and end B will gain the kinetic energy. That is how the heat transfer takes place. So kinetic energy is going to be transferred. So because of that, heat transfer is going to take place. And let us take area of cross section is unity. To simplify the derivation, I will take the area of cross section of the metal rod is, is having unity area of cross section. Okay. So this is how the arrangement is done. Okay. So metal rod, one end of the metal rod is at temperature T, another end of the metal rod is at a temperature T minus lambda into dt by dx where dt by dx is the temperature gradient. Lambda is the distance between A and B, which is exactly equal to mean free path. Then electrons will move from end A to end B. Okay, this is how electron movement takes place. High temperature in the low temperature region, electron movement actually. Okay, so that the thing you remember. Okay. <coughs> So next, we have to find out what is the amount of heat flow which is going to take place from end A to end B in one second. One second only just to heat flow and then find out. Let us use this classical theory or free electron theory to find that amount of heat transfer. And finally, we have to find the expression for thermal conductivity. So let us see the derivation in detail. So let N be the Conduction electrons per unit volume, that is free electrons. Conduction electrons means free electrons per unit volume. So let N be the number of electrons per unit volume. V be the average velocity of these electrons. Okay, I have taken N as a number of electrons per unit volume, V as a average velocity of these electrons. Now, according to classical theory, the average kinetic energy of free electron at temperature T is given by kinetic energy half mv square is equal to 3 by 2 kbt. So that was done in kinetic theory of gases already you studied in third semester. So kinetic energy is equal to 3 by 2 kbt. That is the expression. Okay. So electron has the kinetic energy equal to 3 by 2 kbt at temperature T. 
so different temperature gives you dif- give, gives the different kinetic energy for the electron so kinetic energy of the electron mainly depends on temperature that is the classical theory now you find out what is the kinetic energy at end a and at end b because you know what is the temperature at end a you know at temperature b sorry what is the temperature at b you know so then according to this formula you find out therefore average kinetic energy of the electron at end a is 3 by 2 kbt because the temperature is t at end a now at b what is the average kinetic energy of the electron it is 3 by 2 kb into t minus lambda into dt by dx because at tem- at end b temperature is t minus lambda into dt by dx where dt by dx is this is the temperature gradient therefore the energy carried by the electron from end a to end b that means what is the difference in kinetic energy in terms of temperature you have to find out so what is the actual energy carried by the electrons from end a to end b is given by energy equal to kinetic energy at end a minus kinetic energy at end b okay so that is 3 by 2 kbt minus 3 by 2 kb into t minus lambda into dt by dx that that is e will be equal to so 3 by 2 kbt gets cancelled you left with 3 by 2 kb into lambda into dt by dx so here 3 by 2 kbt with the negative sign this is positive sign this two term cancel last term will remain that is plus 3 by 2 kb lambda into dt by dx this is the energy carried by the electrons from end a to end b now you find out what are the number of electrons which are going to go from end a to end b in one second remember this expression gives you energy carried by one electron one electron is carry madta because this is the kinetic energy of one electron what are the number of electrons they are flowing that are, that we have to find out now electrons can move along six different directions say positive x negative x positive y negative y positive z negative z Be- different directionally how move about they can move in different direction six different directions are there suppose n is the number of electrons per unit volume then in each direction there will be 1 by 6 into n number of electrons they can move so six directions are there if they are equally probable probability is same then definitely 1 by 6 into n number of electrons will move in one direction so then number of free electrons moving along each direction is 1 by 6 into n then v is the velocity so v is the velocity means it is the distance traveled in one second so how to define velocity velocity is distance by time if time is one second definitely that velocity will be equal to distance traveled therefore velocity is also defined as it is the distance traveled in one second or per unit time it is distance traveled per unit time suppose 1 by 6 into n number of electrons moves a distance v in one second definitely they will cross the end a to end b that motion will take place per cross sectionally is to electrons move out until one second these are the number of electrons moving in one direction in one second how many electrons will move that is equal to 1 by 6 n into v so this point you note the number of electrons moving from a to b per unit area per unit time is given by 1 by 6 into n into v just you have to multiply it by v v is the velocity which is the distance by time therefore the amount of heat energy carried by electrons per unit area per unit time from n a to b in one direction that is you you have to take the product of number of electrons moving into energy of each electron okay so number of electrons moving that is 1 by 6 into n into v into energy of each electron we have derived already that is 3 by 2 kb lambda into dt by dx therefore qab that is heat energy flowing from end a to end b in one second per unit area so that is given by 
that is given by uh, this number of electrons into energy or heat energy carried from a to b heat energy carried from a to b is given by this particular expression so just you uh, divide 3 3 ones are 3 Two za so two into two it becomes four so one by four into n v k b lambda into d k by d d x this is the amount of heat flowing from a to b so there is a equal probability b in the a ge kuda equal number of electrons are moving v is the average velocity therefore the heat energy carried from b to a is per unit area per unit time is q b a is equal to same amount but With negative side because it is opposite. And then, so much heat to A in the B carry out to the so much heat to B in the A get could have carry out there to the opposite move moment of one the electron so that is the opposite to one of the other. That is with negative sign. Therefore, Q B A will be equal to minus one by four N V K B lambda into D T by D X. Same magnitude but opposite direction. So, what is the net amount of heat energy transferred between end A to end B in one second? Okay, that is Q is equal to Q A B minus Q B A. Heat energy carried from A to B minus heat energy carried from B to A. So, take the expression. You substitute minus of minus of this term. This becomes plus. So finally, you will get Q is equal to one by two. So one by four plus one by four is one by two. One by two into n v k p lambda into d t by d x. So this is what we have obtained. This expression, this equation number two, represents amount of heat carried by the electrons from end A to end B per unit area per unit time. Okay, so this expression we have to obtain. We have obtained. Finally, we have to find the thermal conductivity. What you have to do? Once you get this expression, amount of heat energy transferred, you can easily find out the thermal conductivity. You consider the definition of thermal conductivity. Now, according to theory of thermal conduction, the heat energy flowing per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to temperature gradient. Theory of conduction here is that. Q is directly proportional to dt by dx. And so, amount of heat energy transferred per unit area per unit time is always directly proportional to temperature gradient, where dt by dx is the temperature gradient. Then you consider the proportionality constant. This is proportionality equation. You consider proportionality constant k. Then this Q will become equal to k into dt by dx. What is this k is called? K is called as thermal conductivity. This is how the thermal conductivity <coughs> arises. So K is thermal conductivity of the material. Now we have expression for Q. Already we have the expression for Q in the previous slide. We have expression for Q. Other than substitute matter. Otherwise you compare this equation with the amount that is a Q equation. So comparing this above equation with Q. So Q is obtained as one by two n v k b lambda into d t by d x. So therefore, this K, if you compare that, this term is nothing but K. Therefore, this K is equal to half n v k b into lambda. So that is the expression for thermal conductivity according to free electron theory of metals. So this is going to be very important derivation, electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. Yeah. very important derivation what is thermal conductivity then <coughs> so thermal conductivity is defined as the amount of heat energy carried per unit area per unit time when two ends of the conductor are maintained at unit temperature gradient so basically in this expression if dt by dx is unity Then K becomes equal to Q. What is Q? Q is the amount of heat flowing per unit area per unit time. When temperature gradient is unity, then K becomes equal to Q. Therefore, thermal conductivity is defined as amount of heat carried per unit area per unit time 
when the two ends of the conductor are maintained at unit temperature gradient. Okay, so when dt by dx is unity, then k is equal to q. That is how we can define the thermal conductivity. And we have obtained the thermal conductivity k is equal to 1 by 2 nv kb into lambda. Okay, 